Good morning, everybody. Thank you for taking the time and joining this session. I'll try to um, make some sense and give you some examples of what we've been doing in a shop floor environment. My name is Dubi Margalit. I work for Telit. I'm the general manager of our factory solution group, which is part of our IoT platform practice. So who's Telit? And by the way, can, we, can I see the presentation here as well? No? OK. Oh, I can see it here. Sorry about that. So Telit, we are one of the largest pure play IoT providers. We do hardware, services, and data solutions for IoT enablement. We're over 1,000 employees worldwide. And our practice is from hardware, we do cellular modules, short range, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, anything that lives and breathes wireless communication, we probably have a hardware product for that. We provide connectivity. We're a worldwide MVNO. Um, so if you need data plans worldwide, we can help you with that. And finally, we have our IoT platforms where for the last 30 plus years, our roots are in IBM Industrial Automations, we've been doing shop floor to top floor data collection and data processing. And finally, we're doing a lot of IoT projects. And we became a subject matter expert in IoT deployment. So if there is a project out there, we probably have been some part of that. So we've got 17 years since we became our IoT platform, or the previous name, ILS Technology. We've been doing industrial assets. We've been doing um, industrial sensors, data collection in a local and distributed manner. Um, we've been there, we've done that, and we're more than happy to help, to, anybody, to help and consult our customers on not only just deployment, but also architectural considerations around that. So I'll, I'll try to make some sense of a lot of terms we hear out there, and I'll try to give our perspective on what we're doing, and I'll talk a little bit about some of the use cases that we've done with our customers. So one of the terms that we keep hearing is Industry 4.0. And Industry 4.0 means a lot of things to a lot of people. And when we're looking at what that means to our customers and what's the opportunity or the, the improvement that they can see utilizing Industry 4.0, we need to look back. And we need to look at what happened when, on the third industrial revolution when we added automation. Here's a little bit of... Uh, when we added automation to the to our manufacturing process. And when we add controllers, we added sensors to help those little computers to make decisions. And when I'm manufacturing something, I'm going to test a few parameters, and I'm going to make decisions until it's completed and based on that decide what I'm going to do. The main challenge is that once I finish that batch, all the information that I collected gets scraped, and you move to the next batch. You know, a good example would be our home thermostat. It's got a temperature sensor. Above 30 degrees Celsius, it will kick on the compressor. Below 25 Celsius, it will stop it. But nobody keeps track of the history of the temperature, how much time the compressor worked. So this is your Industry 3.0 to Industry 4.0. Industry 4.0 is about taking those pockets of information and bringing them into a single data model that allows you to develop a lot of analysis and optimization based not only on the current real-time data, but also the historical trend of the data. And this is where we're focused, because one of the challenges is getting access to real-time data, or what people are defining as industrial IoT. So once you have that information, you can look at existing business processes, like supply chain. If you want to do a real just-in-time supply chain optimization, you need to have real-time access or real-time visibility to the assets. You can't just speculate what's your inventory levels. If you want to talk about manufacturing optimization or identifying uh, uh, inefficiencies in your production line, you need to know what's happening in your production line at every, any given point. The foundation for those applications or those optimization is industrial IoT. 
So here's an example of one of our customers. Honda North America is a very reputable automotive manufacturer with um, over 10 plants across North America. And they needed a solution to get data from their assets. And their assets could be PLCs, or could be CNC machines, or could be anything else. And they needed somehow or some way to normalize all that information and an easy way to federate all this information so they can process and make decisions based on that. So the use of those data points could be for quality as built. When I create or when I do some um, machining with a CNC machine, I'd like to know that what I built is actually what I wanted to build. And the interesting thing is that a lot of this information exists in the CNC machine. You don't need to instrument the CNC machine or the, the production line. The information is already there, but how do you get that? And this is where we complement Honda. We give them a platform that allows them to see all of those parameters, integrate into a decision-making matrix, and do quality as built, and reject parts that are not good. Collect all the historical information for a vehicle that five years ago was shipped. What actually happened on the production line when that vehicle was manufactured? And finally, how do you process a lot of sensorial data and a lot of different data source, if you've got a Mitsubishi PLC and a Siemens PLC and, and maybe a Rockwell PLC, and you want to connect all those data points together in an easy, simple way, this is the value we brought to Honda. Now, manufacturing could be very narrow and could be very wide. And just to get you thinking, think of a McDonald's, which is a very strange manufacturing plant that takes frying oil and potatoes, and the finished product is french fries. And we engaged with a company called Restaurant Technologies when they're a distributor of frying oil to Rarity 1000 a fast food location across the US. And they needed, they realized that there is a lot of inefficiencies in their distribution because they would like to say they're doing just in time, but they have no idea how much frying oil is in each one of the locations. So they will go once a week and fill the tanks in each one of those branches. Sometimes they'll fill half a tank, sometimes they'll fill a quarter of a tank. So we engaged with them and we helped them put together an architecture where, again, we look at McDonald's as a plant, maybe a very small plant, but there is a lot of similarity because the workers at the line are not well trained. There is a huge turnover. You need to be able to monitor them and you, there's inherent inefficiencies that you can maybe optimize. And there is equipment that if they go down, they have huge influence on the turnover of that location. So using our platform, we put gateways in each one of those branches, and we collected data for our industrial IoT platform, and then handed it over as a single data model to RTI, so to RT, so they can process that, and now they can serve multiple destinations. So they can work with the brands and run KPIs on actual performance in each one of those locations. They can work with the machine builders the fryers, and give them some indication on the temperature curve of the heating element. So opening up and, and providing that unlimited access and the flexibility to change what you're looking in can bring significant value. The use cases are endless. The visibility is the foundation for all of those use cases. So why are we not doing that everywhere? There is a lot of challenges. And fundamentally, and this is what we see day in and day out, every time we engage a customer, is a very, if it's a small shop floor or a large shop floor, there is a huge heterogeneous environment. There are so many PLC makers out there. You know, just the, the, the big three, Mitsubishi, Rockwell, and, and Siemens. But then there's a lot of other manufacturers out there. There is different equipment. We see uh, manufacturers of you know, RFID readers, 
robots, CNC machines. Each one has their own native protocol. And there's ways that people today harmonize those devices based on, you know, you might have heard about OPC and you might have heard about other technologies, but those are a limiting factor. How can I talk natively to the Siemens uh, PLC and utilize some advanced features that the PLC can give me, but not spend the next four weeks writing custom code to connect to it? Now, that's just the asset side. What about your destination? We've got all our on-prem uh, enterprise system, you know, from our MES system all the way up to different ERP system. And then we have a lot of new cloud and elastic computing, and we keep hearing about things, new things coming from Microsoft and coming from IBM and coming from uh, SAP. Each one of those destinations requires integration. And that takes time. So we start shuffling around and thinking about what's more important. And when we're looking today at different data extraction projects, we, we are constantly challenged with we need to prioritize. And we wish we could have done all 10 projects, but probably we have the, the, you know, the resources to only do one. So what's the most important one? In addition to that, we start having new challenges, which are as critical as the diversification we're seeing, security. If I'm going to start opening my shop floor to the world, that creates a huge security threat with huge financial impact. If a hacker goes into my OT network and takes the production down, that's millions of dollars. And, and it could be even fatalities if he, take, if he takes control over a robot and start wiggling it around. Connecting to one plant is easy. But what happens if you've got 30,000 McDonald's locations? How can you scale? How can you change your deployment in each one of those places in a flexible, dynamic way? And finally, once you identify an issue, you're sitting in your knock and you're trying to mediate an issue, the ability to tunnel into that location in a secure way and fix the problem without leaving your office. And this is where Telit comes into play. We've de been developing, and, uh, and our roots, as I mentioned before, is you know, we've been doing this for the last 30 years. We started as part of IBM Industrial Automation. In 2000, we became ILS Technology, and in 2013, Telit has acquired us. And the way we look at things, and, and I'll try not to dwell too much on that, is we have our manufacturing asset side, so we've got 30 years of drivers and connectors. And this is not just the latest and greatest PLCs. We connect to 30 years old asset. One of the things we like to say is no machine left behind. Because the thing that really typically breaks down is not the, the one you just bought last year. It's the 30 years old CNC machine that nobody knows how to connect to it. And then we have our platform, which could be on-prem or off-prem, that provides that data collection and data processing. And it can be delivered as an appliance for a shop floor to top floor. And it can be delivered as a hybrid for distributing data to um, a platform or a cloud platform. And finally, we've got our enterprise transport that, again, for the last 20 plus years, we've been connecting to SAP, to IBM, to um, Microsoft. So if you want to take data from a PLC and push it to IBM Watson, we've, we've got those connectors. So just hooking everything up takes about an hour, and you've got the data flowing. And now you can talk about real i4.0 applications. So from a driver side, those are all native drivers. We do OPC, but OPC has a lot of limitations. So we do OPC DA, we do OPC UA, but we'll talk natively to a Siemens PLC. We'll talk natively to a DC tool. Those are torque tools that are sitting on the line. Um, we'll talk natively to an RFID, a CNC machine. So we see much more information from those assets than most in existing infrastructure. Our logic engine, our data federation engine, is visual. So it's drag and drop. You flowchart the logic, because the business logic is not that complex. Read me that bit, read me that bit, you know, process the last 30 samples. 
it's not very complex. It's just those projects, because of the device and enterprise connectivity, becomes huge projects. And finally, our enterprise connectors. We probably can connect to anything out there. And if not, then we have flexible payloads to define. So we do REST API. We can do web services. We've done that multiple times. And now you can talk about reading real-time data from the plant. Right? Those are what Industry 4.0 uh, horizontal integration is talking about. How you can pull real-time data and share that in a secure way with your suppliers. Have a PLC tell a supplier that it's starved and issue the purchase order directly from the OT network in a secure way. Having a customer know that his custom order vehicle is ready or actually seeing where it is on the production line. The fundamental thing about it, so the technology enables that, but the fundamental challenge now is security. How can you do that in a safe way? And, and inherently, when we're starting to talk about opening up your shop floor, you need to look at security in a different way. And you need to look at it holistically, because there is multi-tier access control that needs to make sure that you're protected. So, you know, from the node itself that we can control who access what, through the access to the plant, through a private network that wraps around the whole infrastructure, we've done it all. And we haven't been doing that for the last year. For the last 15 years, we've been connecting the semiconductor industry, providing access to 98% of the 300 millimeter fabs. So if you're a machine builder out there that sells $50 million devices to a semiconductor plant, and you would like to remote access that device, you would go through us and for our SecureWise service because we provide that access control that the manufacturer allows access to their real-time manufacturing network because they trust that we'll protect them and our limitations, our protection, and our ability to scan anything that goes through the network gives them the comfort and to enjoy the benefit of remote connectivity for their machine builders. Because there is inherent value. If, if somebody that sold you a machine is going to monitor it, you know it's going to run all the time. But how do you do that without risking your security? So the, our SecureWise solution is built from a private network, worldwide private network, worldwide users, and worldwide uh, destinations or manufacturing facilities. And we provide that access in a federated way so one machine builder does not have access to another machine builder's equipment in different destinations. So it's a many-to-many -many relationship where it's a private network, so it's not IP addressable. You can only access it if you're part of that group. And then in each one of the plants, we've got gateways that even in the unlikely event that you penetrated that, you would still be contained and restricted to the specific destination that you were authorized to do. So, and again, I'm, I'm trying to give you a little bit of flavor of what we're doing and, and what people are, what we're seeing out there on, you know, on the shop floor with industrial IoT and Industry 4.0 is a significant driver. And, and we see a lot of convergence of, of different technologies. And I like to break IoT into two major segments. One of them is connected products, and the other one is the, the manufacturing of that connected product. And we see convergence, especially in automotive. Right? We've got connected vehicles on one end, and we've got connected plants on another end. And the data through the life cycle of the product brings significant value to the manufacturer. So the ability to be able to connect on the product before it becomes a product and after it leaves the factory floor and correlate that information and to track that information gives a lot of value to the manufacturer. The ability to aggregate and, and augment that data with environmental condition. We've got customers that are connecting to their building infrastructure and correlating power consumption with manufacturing data, because we have a driver to BACnet. So the, the secret is accessibility. 
and flexibility to get and process that data. And finally, we're seeing a lot of destination, a new destination, and we see the, an exploding need for real-time data. So what we're doing is we're providing an easy foundation for people to access that data, normalize that data, so they can try a lot of other things. So we provide a lot of agility around that. And that's more or less what I wanted to cover. So I'll leave some time for questions and answers, and I hope I didn't run too quickly. I'm inviting anybody who wants to talk more to come to our booth, and we'll be happy to spend more time and give you more ideas of what we're doing. So any questions? Anyone? <laughs> 